So when did your when did you write your first book? Was it hand manipulated stitches? It was book? was hand manipulated stitches for machine knitters, and it was back uh, in the late eighties. I got a letter from uh, Interweave Press. They were looking to start doing some books, and they asked if I was interested in doing a machine knitting book. And because I was a contributing editor at Threads Magazine, I had to run everything by them first. So I went up to Taunton Press, which was also here in Connecticut, and I said, you know, this is, is what's happening. And they said, oh, no, no, if you're going to write a book, you're going to do it for us. So all of a sudden, I, I had a book contract, uh, and uh -huh. um, the rest is history. I, I don't think I ever realized that hand-manipulated stitches would stay in print as long as it has. It's, it's going on 30 years now. Wow. It's an wow. awfully long time for a craft book to still be uh, on the top of the list. Yeah, well, hey, it's still relevant. I mean, we still do the very same things. Well, know? and we have fewer dealers and resources to go to than we did yeah. before. So it's, yeah. it's gratifying when, when I hear people like you say that it was what really clarified things for them. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we were after. Yeah, so what came after um, Hand Manipulated Stitches? Well, the book finally went out of print after about 10 years, and then um, uh, briefly it was available through Bond knitting frames, and then uh, ultimately the rights reverted to me. And I put the book back into print uh, through Print on Demand, which is a real boon to, to craft areas that could be orphaned by the big publishers. Mm -hmm. uh, major publishers aren't interested in books that might sell, you know, a thousand copies a year. But with Print on Demand, it's been possible to keep the book in print. And once the book came back into print, I think that people realized that I was neither senile nor dead. And I started getting a lot of emails asking questions. They, they, they find me. Uh, with a name like Gwalyumi, I think it's easy to find me, actually. So I went back to my file cabinet and uh, went back and looked over hand manipulated stitches. And the one thing that I felt I hadn't given enough information on in the first book was the whole concept of bridging, using a holding position to gain full unlimited access to all of the needles on the bed to change stitch size or to add extra rows and so forth. So that gave birth to the second book, which was very catchy, more hand manipulated stitches and completely devoted to bridging. And um, that book did well and I went back to the file cabinet again and sat at the machine and played and um, did, uh, I have to stop and think, in 2008, I think, brought out uh, him, hand it's by machine, <laughs> just stop and think for a second, hand it's by machine, which really focused on taking specific handed techniques, transferring them to the machine. It's interesting, the chapter on entrelock knitting was originally going to be part of hand manipulated stitches. And Taunton Press had set a very finite number of pages for the book, and we were already running over. So they said you can cut from every chapter and pare it down, or you can just find one area to cut. And I felt as though Entrelock didn't really fit the chapters we had set up for the book. They were very specific to things like transferring stitches, crossing stitches, manipulations that were clearly defined. And Entrelock was sort of a stepchild to all of that. And we'd moved since I'd done the first book and I could not find my files anywhere for the for the method for Entrelac. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I knew that I hadn't done any uh, scrapping off or rehanging. I knew that I had done it with bridging. And it's interesting when the logic is clear, things like that come back to you. And I sat at the machine and played for about an hour and had one of those eureka moments and that was a full chapter in Hand Knits by Machine. So yeah. it's back. Yeah. Yay. Uh, I want to say that I think what you just said was very, very important about the logic being there. Because if you just learn hand, uh, if you just learn machine knitting by memorization, you know, mm -hmm. step one, press this button, step two, bring the carriage across, you never have a complete understanding of machine knitting, but if the logic is there, 
then you can reconstruct what you did. Otherwise, it feels like ironing to me. It, uh, I mean, it yeah. just, mm -hmm. there's no sense of uh, adventure or discovery. And, and that, that's always been um, the real thrill for me, saying, well, what if I try it this way? The book says to do this, but what if I don't? What will happen? And, you know, sometimes it's, it's a good thing that happens and sometimes not so good. And as I've said to students for years, if you know what you did and you can do it again, yeah. it's fabulous. Yeah. If it's beautiful and you have no idea how it happened, then that's a mistake. Because if you can't repeat it, it's worthless. Right, right. So when you understand what's happening, I think sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to hold on to the information. So after hand knitting, what was it called? Hand knitting for hand knits by machine. Hand knits by machine. After that, is uh, was open sources next? Well, open spaces was open the fourth spaces. one. Yes, I know. I keep saying it wrong too. They're all kind of jiggling around in my head. Um, all of the information that's in open spaces was originally supposed to be a chapter in a totally different book. And when I started experimenting and trying some of the things that I wanted to expand on, I realized that it wasn't going to make it as a chapter in another book. As it is, it ended up being a much longer book than I had uh, sort of budgeted the time to do. What happens when I sit down and start playing at the machine is that business, I just said, what if? What if I do this? And what if I do that? And when you start to bring in all of the variables, the number of stitches or the number of rows or the direction that you manipulate stitches, how many times you do something before you repeat it, all of those variables usually contribute to new patterns. So this book grew from one what if to the next and uh, did not end up a chapter in another book. It ended up its own, its own book altogether.